Hi, I'm Alex Hamer. I'm a technical artist and a recent master's graduate. And I worked freelancing on Project Pegasus throughout and past the end of my master's degree, where I aimed to design a system that allowed artists to create AAA quality cloudscapes in Unreal with the help of Houdini, and to also allow real-time cloudscaping to enable last-minute drastic changes. This video will discuss how to draw render targets into the volumetric cloud component in the Unreal Engine. However, I'd like to start out with explaining why this process was a part of Project Pegasus in the first place. At the time, which was around July to August, Unreal 5.2 was the engine version that we were working in, and up until this version, there was no native VDB support. If you're unaware, VDBs, otherwise known as voxel database or volumetric data blocks, are a file format standard for containing volumetric data, typically in the form of density, color, or temperature. This allows for volumetric simulations such as smoke, fire, explosions, or clouds to be saved in a format which can be read by software. This is the ideal way of transferring this type of data and enables extreme fidelity. Unreal Engine was a tad late to the party with adding native VDB support and thus, there are a few third-party options and community resources to enable users to bring VDB files into Unreal. However, with the limitations of the project being no third-party resources, I had to come up with another way to create a system which allowed real-time updating cloudscapes, where you can physically drag objects around within the volumetric cloud system. While I went through a few different ideas, render targets seemed to be the obvious solution. Drawing render targets into the volumetric cloud system did already exist, and a tool came with the volumetrics plugin if you enable it. It's still there. In this tool, you can essentially paint the clouds to a single volumetric cloud layer. However, this is only at one single height and only has one noise type, so there is a very limited customization. And thus, I got to work prototyping a system that allowed transformable objects within the volumetric cloud component. Eventually, I landed on an idea where we split up the render target into tiles and have each tile act as a vertical slice within a designated space in the world. So we will have two main components, the cloud actors themselves, which is what we will use to transform the cloud objects within the scene and input the cloud shape. And then the main blueprint, which is what will set the bounding box for the cloudscape over our level. Each cloud actor knows its location and also the bounding box area. So using this custom material mask, we can treat each bounding box like a 2D top-down area, where we then take a slice of the volume texture and place it within our material UV tile. Using some logic within the construction script, we update the scale and rotation and XY position so that it mimics the real size top-down look. Within this material, we can also flip through each flame of the volume texture of the cloud of objects that we input. For this project, I chose to have 36 frames on a 6x6 tile set. This would allow me to squeeze a lot of data information within the volume texture. This actor will then be looped over by the main blueprint, which contains a volumetric cloud component. And this will take the flipbook material that I've just mentioned and draw it onto the render target. Essentially how it works is a construction script with a draw function, where we get the input of our cloud material instance dynamic of our cloud actor and then it takes the location of the cloud actor and plots the coordinate for where it should be within the tile space. This uses an equation that takes the location input and the area for the bounding box, so where the top altitude and the bottom altitude is. It then calculates firstly where the location is between the top and bottom altitude and maps it to a 0 to 1 range. This value is then used to determine the exact tile frame the location responds to, which is then further converted into a value for the column and the row. It then flips through each frame and increments forward another tile in the vertical world space and draws the material onto the render target. You can see how this works when I move an object around the scene and how it updates on the render target in real time when I move it up, down and left and right. This works great. We can now draw volume textures onto a render target. However, how would we get this to be read into the material as a volume texture and thereby into the volumetric cloud system. Well, helpfully Unreal Engine provides us with the volume texture material function within the volumetrics plugin, in which we can input the render target, some world values like our world position and scale, 
the number of XY frames we have, which is 16, and the resolution of our render target. This then can read as flat texture as a volume texture. We can input this logic into a modified version of the default volumetric cloud material with some light noise, and after all of this is checked into scene together, we get our working system. We set up our cloud space, and we can turn on a board indicator to help us. Drag in a cloud actor, input our volume texture from Houdini, set up the basic scales, and start dragging it around the scene. You can see in real time, firstly how the dynamic instance of the cloud actor gets updated, and then also how the render target of the cloud space gets updated. You may also notice though, that our cloud systems tile infinitely. We can use a mask in our materials in case we want a specific set of clouds over an island, say, to disable the tiling throughout the world. Using this toolset, you can construct an entire cloud space using many different volume textures from Houdini and craft them perfectly around the entire cloudscape. The advantages of this are that once you have your render target baked and set, you can just input this texture into the volumetric cloud system. You wouldn't need to redraw this over and over once it's in a working level. So what are the limitations or problems with this system? Well, probably the most noticeable issue is the blockiness or voxelize effect. This is where the data between each slice of the object we exported from Houdini is lost and therefore Unreal tries to blend them together, creating a sort of stacked layer look. Another very noticeable issue is the scaling. You can't draw half a slice over half a tile, so you either have to reduce the amount of slices you are drawing or draw some slices twice, which leads to a janky scaling which isn't precise. These are issues that, due to project time constraints, I never got around to solving. However, the specific issue of data loss between the slices is unfortunately one that, at the current time, is unsolvable. Increasing the number of slices you take from the object in Houdini is the only way to get more data into the volume texture, as well as increasing the resolution for the render target. And while there is slightly more room for tiles and high resolution, we were already working at a limit where Unreal was starting to tell us that we were over the memory bandwidth limit. So therefore, it wouldn't be as easy as just doubling all of the resolutions and packing in more data in. It also has a slight design flaw of being a loop. So therefore, the more cloud actors within the scene, the more expensive it gets to draw the whole scene each time. I hope this video has given you an insight into the early days of Project Pegasus Clouds and what hurdles we initially struggled with. This system, while it was successful as a first price type and proof of concept, was abandoned in favor of Unreal 5.3's sparse volume textures which can provide infinitely more detail as they contain actual 3D volumetric data as opposed to just slices. Because of this, there is definitely more room for exploration in this area of using render targets to use into the volumetric cloud system. And I'd like to encourage people to see what is possible with this technique. If you'd like to watch the next video discussing the system that replaced this one and allowed for much higher fidelity real-time cloudscaping, you can find the video on the Project Pegasus page on the SideFX website or on the SideFX YouTube channel. I've been Alex Hamer, and thank you for watching.